finally spring here. Temperatures are beginning to climb and it's almost nice to start sitting out in the garden again. However, as you can probably tell, I've not done any of my winter garden work. So in this video, I thought I'd show you around the garden, walk you through all of the winter prep work Linny's doing and any prep work that you might need to do in your garden. Right outside the door, I've got my grow bags and my pots. They need the most attention because they dry out quickest. So they go right next to the door so that I can't forget about them. Last year, I was growing aubergines in the grow bags, strawberries in the planters and the pots, and I was growing herbs in these troughs. But all of these really need a tidy up. So let's start by removing all of the dead leaves, which should promote growth in the plant. And in a couple of the weeks, these plants will be looking really fresh. We might even start seeing flowers in a month or so. These strawberries could do with being repotted in fresh soil and placed towards the back of the planter, but that's a job for another day. Already, these are looking so much better. So I neglected my strawberries last year, but this one has actually formed a runner into this pot. And then this one also has its own runner. So I'm gonna to need to place this in a pot and give it a chance to take root. Unless you protect them or even bring them indoors, aubergines are unlikely to survive the winter. So let's remove all of these dead stems to make space for this year's plants. I'm going to leave the roots in place and let them decay in the grow bags and pile in more compost when it's time to plant. And look at all this. This is rocket, which I sowed last spring. That survived over the winter. Um, this isn't reseeded, this is old, hard, woody plant. Even the new growth from this one-year-old plant, it's just better than the supermarket. Last year, I decided to make a sit-down area where I'd grow some berries and some herbs, and I decided to put two raspberry canes in. While planting the raspberries, I discovered some bricks which I had to dig up to make space for the plants. So I think there's actually a patio under here. So both of the raspberries didn't do very well last year. I think this is a summer fruiting variety because of all the new leafy growth. And I think this is an autumn fruiting variety because it still looks pretty dead except at the very base of the plant down here. So you're meant to cut back spring and summer fruiting varieties on the same year that they fruit. However, I didn't do that, so I'm going to leave this one and see if it can produce an early crop and I'll cut it back later in the year. However, autumn fruiting canes are meant to cut back in late winter, so I'm only really a month late. So we're gonna cut this one off here, right down towards the ground. Now the main part of my garden are these no-dig beds. When I moved in in March last year, this was all lawn and I needed somewhere to grow by about May. So I took all of my cardboard boxes, put them down and dumped a load of compost on top. I only used half the recommended amount because compost is actually quite expensive. But it worked out quite fine, it's mostly weed free and honestly guys, it is almost no effort at all. So if you haven't given it a go yet, I really recommend you give No Dig a try. However, in this bottom bed, I had no choice except to dig. It was full to the brim with mint. It had completely taken over the bed and I needed to remove as much of that as possible. And you could also see some fabric poking through, which is creating a desert-like effect. So I literally had to unearth the soil underneath. On top, I grew my kale and my chard, but honestly, it's been so much work and it's already a mess of weeds. So the plan this year is to turn this into a no-dig bed as well. The first thing to do is to remove the stems of these dead kale plants. They all died in the really cold snap in December when it got down to minus 10 and the whole garden was covered in snow for a week. As it happens, I have a spare room filled to the ceiling with cardboard boxes and a compost pile made of last year's food scraps, ready to go. And that's all you need to get started on a no-dig bed. There are no tools required. I should probably buy a wheelbarrow. The idea behind No Dig is that we put down a barrier that weeds cannot penetrate. Doing this starves them of light and weeds simply die. However, we pick a material that will break down over a period of a few months so that any plants that we plant will be able to bury their roots deeper as they get bigger. So it's a balancing act of how long it takes for a weed to survive without light against how long it takes for our plants to grow. The first step is to lay down your cardboard, making sure it overlaps so that we don't leave any gaps. Then we water the cardboard, which helps it break down faster, and then we heap all of our compost on top. You want to spread the compost around so that it covers the cardboard with a layer that is at least two inches thick, ideally four inches, and then give it all another spray of water, and then that bed is ready to use. Well, that's me done, I'm knackered, and there's a rain cloud moving in. So I'm gonna leave the second half of this till next week. I still need to go around and put some wood chip around the edges, but that is one easy no-dig bed. This is the first time I've taken you all around my garden. So if you like this, please press the like button so I know to do more of this in the future. Opposite the door and up the middle of my garden are these bamboo arches, and I haven't quite figured out how to make them arch over the top yet. But last year I grew peas, runner beans, and cucumbers all the way up the sides. Underneath the frames, I was growing all of my salad. The idea being that the plants that were climbing up the frame would shelter the salad 
from the midday sun during the height of the summer. That didn't work last year. The peas only grew one metre tall. The runner beans took way too long to get started and the summer was so hot that really nothing at all lived anyway. But I did construct these small lids so this really is like a salad bar. And there's still some more rocket, look at that. Now over on the other side of the garden I only had enough compost for one no-dig bed where I'm growing all of my alliums. I've got onions at the front, leeks in the middle and garlic at the back. Now this week I'm going to spend a load of time clearing away the stems of old annual plants. Over here the sweet corn and on the last two beds the marigolds. Now I've left the bottom of the garden entirely uncultivated. At the top of the hill there are apple trees forming the woodland area and at the bottom down here is the wild area which really means I just didn't mow the grass one summer. But it all died back over the winter so the plan is to use this opportunity to turn this into a mini wildflower meadow. And then the plan is to net off the bottom of the garden and then let the chickens free range. Anyway, that's my garden and it's in a much nicer state than it was at the start of the video. Thank you guys for watching and please leave any of your comments and advice in the chat. I do love to hear from you all. And remember to subscribe to follow my progress throughout the year and for instructional videos on how to grow your own food. Otherwise, click this video here for my review of this plastic greenhouse where I point out what went right and what went wrong. And otherwise, as always, Happy gardening.